Okay, you heard it here first. Donald Trump is going back on his promise to release his taxes. I have made previous videos where I have said that Donald Trump does not want to be president. This could be the deal breaker. If Donald Trump does not release his taxes as promised, there is going to be the biggest convention fight you've ever seen because there are over a thousand delegates that uh, have supported uh, Ted Cruz, uh, Kasich, and Rubio. And there are also a bunch of uncommitted uh, delegates. Altogether, they could form enough if they can get some of the Trump committed delegates to go along with them to replace a rule in the convention that the tax returns of Donald Trump must be released or all delegates are released from their commitments uh, to support Trump and they could even put a rule in that without those tax returns Donald Trump's name uh, cannot be put into a nomination. That would create the biggest Donnie Brook in the world. Uh, the following is the information uh, that has just been uh, released and the commentary from the uh, guest on MSNBC. Third issue, and this is new today, and this is, I think, going to be news um, throughout the day and maybe throughout the week. Donald Trump has now said definitively he will not relax, release his tax returns. He promised again and again he would do this. And I would look today um, and in the following days for the Never Trump groups to say, you promised, you either live up to the promise or we go back to fighting about this nomination. You lured those delegates, you lured those voters on the promise that you were going to disclose your taxes. Goodness knows what's in those, and we didn't sign up for this. We signed up for the Trump who was going to release his tax returns. I think this is a serious problem for Trump. I think he doesn't want to release those taxes in the worst possible way. Mm -hmm. And I would look for people who have already uh, supported uh, Trump and people who are being pressured to support Trump and delegates to be in saying, wait a second. Mm -hmm. Our support is conditioned on your releasing those tax returns. So I think that's the new um, hullabaloo that's going to happen in the Republican and, Party. And Jennifer, we've brought up the taxes issue several times, but to me it seems like that's the easiest for him to wiggle out of because it is not required. It is a longstanding tradition, but it is no, not. I, I disagree. I, but no, he will say great. this. I think this is was he's wiggled his way out of, I think, many things that the conservative party thought it would be the end of anyone else's political career. But some of the other more substantive things, like the minimum wage, I'll go back again to the proposed ban on Muslims coming to this country, sans the new London mayor. That seems to be a more complex more global issue that I don't know how he can pivot from. No, I disagree. Right, honey, just uh, the Cameron, I mean, if, I, if I can, if I can, I, I think it. I think it should be easy for him to pivot on this uh, immigration ban mm -hmm. thing. In other words, the, the key thing that's offensive about that is the idea that you're going to ask somebody who wants to come for a visit to Disneyland, oh, before you come into our country, what's your religion? That's not American. That's not appropriate. What he can talk about is say that what he wants to have is a pause or special vetting or special attention to people who are coming from countries that have a terrorist problem. But, but this idea, uh, th there can be no compromise for people of principle on this. We cannot have a situation in which we deny entry to the United States under any circumstances for 1.4 billion people, many of whom are wonderful people, many of whom, by the way, are fighting in our military or in our police departments. We cannot accept that if that's going to apply to anyone who is a professor. Muslim. That Jennifer, is unacceptable and un-American. Jennifer, let me ask you this. Perhaps the contrast that I'm trying to make when you talk about taxes versus the Muslim ban. The millions of people who voted for Donald Trump, the thousands, and we covered his rallies, when he would talk about the ban on Muslims, talk about the wall, they would cheer and turn out in droves to vote for him. Very few in that audience, I believe, having covered these rallies, would say, oh, Donald Trump's not giving his tax information because they bought in to that side. More established conservatives like yourself and more seasoned writers see the problem of the taxes. But the, the, the fuel that burned this fire that the, the establishment is trying to tamp down was built on 
the banning of Muslims, the immigration comments, not his taxes is the point I'm making to you. Okay. But you're missing the point that Donald Trump got somewhere around 40, 45 percent uh, of the uh, vote, somewhere in that vicinity. He didn't get 50 percent. But and let's just say that 30, 35 percent of those are uh, rabid uh, Trump supporters. You got 65 percent of uh, the uh, people that voted against them for IE, for uh, Cruz, uh, Rubio or Kasich. Those people are, are looking for a reason to dump Trump. If 65% of them come into that goddamn convention and they ramrod, and we already know that Cruz has got a bunch of supporters uh, in there favoring his positions, if they walk into that convention and say, uh, either release those tax returns or all bets are off, okay, uh, there's going to be hell to pay. And as a little uh, uh, cherry on top of the Sunday, Trump is floating Giuliani, who is a fucking racist, uh, to be head a commission in charge of the Muslim problem. Everybody knows that Giuliani's a racist. He hates black people, he hates Hispanics, and he hates Muslims. So you're going to put a Muslim hater in charge of fixing a Muslim problem? Yeah, right. All right, anyway, let's keep going on this particular line. Except There's it was built on something else, Cameron. One is, can Donald Trump moderate his policies so that he unifies the Republican Party? I don't think he can, and for mm -hmm. that reason, I don't expect an undiluted, unqualified endorsement from Paul Ryan, mm -hmm. nor do I expect um, him to get up to 90% of the uh, Republican Party, which is, frankly, what's going to be required. Second issue is whether he now has opened the door at the convention in the process of getting the nomination by refusing Refusing to do so. Remember, there are about a thousand delegates um, collectively that are with Marco Rubio, uh, John Kasich, and uh, with um, Ted Cruz. Uh, uh, Paul Ryan, excuse me, not, not Paul Ted Ryan. Ted Cruz. The three of them. I'm having a, a uh, preparing moment. Um, Ted Cruz. Ted candidates. Cruz. Um, Ted Cruz. The, those people, plus some people who aren't that thrilled, but maybe um, technically undeclared, but leaning delegates, those people have the power to say at the convention, a majority of those people have the power to say, if you do not release your taxes, mm -hmm. we're not putting your name in uh, nomination. And I think you're going to see a really big fight about that. You're yeah. right, though. That's not the outside the the, uh, convention game. That's the inside the convention game. Tam Tamara, if, I, if, if I can just jump in for, for a moment, and I think this is really crucial. I do think that one of the things animating Trump supporters, and they call my radio show all the time, is he's such a great businessman. He's been so successful. He knows how to build businesses. He knows how to create jobs. He knows. It. Now, if his tax returns show that basically he's been way exaggerating his wealth, which I believe his tax returns would show, that his financial empire is really in trouble. It's heavily leveraged. He owes a lot of money. He's planning to get back the money he's already loaned to his campaign by raising a billion dollars from this Goldman Sachs guy, Mnookin, who is just appointed finance director. That's where the tax return stuff is important right. because it would go to a core basis for his campaign, which is this is a guy who knows business and is a successful business man and never fails. I don't think that's real, and I think that's why he won't disclose his tax returns and why it's a key issue. Well, we're out of time. It would be interesting to see if Paul Ryan then puts that on the table as a part of their conversation and their negotiations, as brought up by Jennifer, whether or not the speaker will say, you need to produce those taxes and you can't hide behind the alleged audit. Thank you both for your time. We greatly Thank appreciate it. Great Thank conversation. You. Coming up. Okay, so this might be the nail that actually uh, drives him, you know, uh, in the last nail in his coffin on this one, because that is a straight out lie that he's told the American people as far as releasing his tax returns, and now he's going back on his promise. So we're gonna see, but that, I'm telling you, that convention, they are gonna raise holy hell about those tax returns, especially all the anti-Trump people.